morning. How's it going today? Good morning in person for all of you who are in person. For those of you online, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're so glad you're here. Um, we know that right now, uh, more than ever, we need connection and community. Am I right? And I think uh, what, what I just want to encourage you to do is just to download our app. That's the best way to connect with us. It's the best way to stay updated on everything. Uh, again, just like Sarah said in the message before in the, the very beginning, uh, you can, you can, when you download the app, you can just hit the new need updates button there and just let us know. If, if you're not on our, our email list or you just want to connect, uh, let us know because we'd love to, to help you connect here at Rhapsody. That's really important to us, and this community is really important, and so uh, we'd, we'd love to help you do that. I want to encourage you um, today to interact with the message uh, and with worship. I want to encourage you. Uh, last week, we talked about passion and enthusiasm, right? And so I, I want that to bleed over into our, our, I want it to become a cultural norm for us to interact. And not just because it's fun to interact, which it is, right? It, it's funner to interact than just to sit there and be bored, right? Um, so, so it's funner to interact, but also it does something, again, in your soul, in your heart, when you interact, when you shout or clap or, or when you sing along when we're, when we're worshiping. Um, it, it, is a, it is you engaging with what God has for you. And we are experiencing and hearing from God together, right? This is not just I talk, you listen. We're, we're, here, to, we're, we're here to interact with God's Word and to hear from Him, okay? So after last week's message, I was absolutely captivated by a scripture that seemed completely out of place. Like, I, <clears throat> I could not get it out of my head. I wanted to preach something else. I kept thinking, I, I, I kept asking the Lord throughout the week, just, is there anything else that you have uh, within the breadth of scripture that you would rather have me uh, talk about? And for some reason, I just couldn't get this out of my head. And slowly as I began to think about it and pray about it and, and, and do some deep dive into the text, I recognized why uh, this was so important. And so we're just going to jump right in. We're going to be in Luke chapter 2 and starting in verse 41. So this is Jesus at 12 years old. <clears throat> Every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first, he's 12, uh, because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they, they finally discovered him in the temple. There's a lot of things about this story that just don't add up to me. <clears throat> Sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them, and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. Jesus' response. But why did you need to search? He asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? There's actually no Greek word there for house. You've heard maybe my father's business. I need to be about my father's business. There's no Greek word there. All it really says is I need to be about my father's. And the meaning there is I need to be about the things of my father. But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth, Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. So the title of the message today is Mind Your Business. Mind Your Business. So uh, the holidays are upon us, which means that Christmas movies are sure to follow. Am I right? I know you all have, might have your favorites, and there's, some, there's definitely some staples in the Chapperson house. Um, my, my wife was watching Elf last night. I was like, it's too early. 
but she disagreed with me and went ahead and watched it anyway. Um, and, and so, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas, I think, is one that kind of, it, it, it goes right in between Halloween and Christmas. I think that's like the perfect one that kind of, you know, meets the two. But, uh, but in our house, one movie that we play every year is Home Alone. Yeah? And, uh, and Home Alone has always, it, I've always actually seen the correlation between Home Alone and this portion of Scripture. Uh, you know, if you don't know the movie Home Alone, which I, I'm sure all of you do, um, it, it, it's about this kid who gets left behind at home while his parents go on vacation. His parents and all his family go on vacation, right? They miscount and somehow leave him behind and don't realize it until they're already in New York or wherever they were. I may, may not have been New York. There's, two, there's like three movies or something, so I'll probably get them mixed up. But, but in, right, they get to their destination and then realize he's not there. I think she realized on the plane, right? Kevin, I think is like the thing. Okay. I'll never do that again, just so you know. So I, I was thinking about like that idea of how do you forget your kid? Like how do you, how do you leave Jesus behind? Like for three days it took them to find him. So they obviously made their way uh, qu- quite substantially back to where they were going and, and, and finally realized he wasn't in the company. So the first question, obviously, that I'm, I'm wrestling with is, how do you forget Jesus in Jerusalem? That's my first question. That's my question for the parents. But then my, question, my second question that, that comes right away is for Jesus is, what was so important to you, right? I, I have to know. What was so important to you, Jesus, 12-year-old Jesus, that you would say, I'm just going to be right here while y'all go back home. Uh, and I'll just be here in the temple. Like, what was so important to Jesus that he needed to stay in the temple? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Jesus essentially told his mom and his dad, I have to be about the things of my father. I need to be here. I, I need to be pressing in to what God has for me. My father, God has for me. Uh, and, and we see this marked throughout Jesus' life, don't we? From this, this which, which 12 years old, it's that transitional, in the Jewish culture, it's actually a transitional age. He would have been just turning 13 soon, which, is, which means that he is bar mitzvah, which means he's actually now technically an adult in, in the Jewish culture. Now, I know you all have 13-year-olds, and I know they're not adults. Okay, I get it. Um, but in the Jewish culture, that was a reality. And so, uh, so they, he was becoming responsible for his own study of the Scripture. He was becoming responsible for how he responded to God and the decisions that he was going to make. And so this was a very important transitional time in Jesus' life. We see it from the beginning of what we'll call his adulthood. We'll call it his maturing time, okay? His 13 all the way to 33 when he died on the cross. So we, we see this, this passion, this, this like, I mean, un, unfading unfa- passion to to be about his father's business, right? All the way from that age to the age of his death on the cross. We see it here in that he was he was pouring over the scriptures. And obviously because of the amount of uh, wisdom that he has here, he he's obviously this wasn't his first time reading through the scriptures. He had been memorizing, he had been studying, he had been thinking about his father's business. He's been thinking about the scriptures. He's been pouring over them for all his life. And this was just one time where he gets to interact with uh, the scholars in the temple, and so he can learn even more. But we also see it in his constant, in his adult life, his constant communication with God, don't we? He's constantly going away to a quiet place, constantly looking for a time to be with just him and the father. Not just to be refreshed, obviously he needed that, but he needed that time to be about his father's business. He, he, he needed to know that, that what he's doing, he's on the right track. We also see it in the mission that Jesus had. The mission of saving humanity, right? That he, was, he, he would not, nothing would budge him from this mission. He was fervently going forward in this mission and nothing was going to stop him. 
So we see the passion that Jesus had for being about his father's business. And there was nothing that was going to take him off course, right? Nothing was ever going to take him off course. He was unflinching in it. And, and you might say, uh, Matt, that was Jesus, right? Like, that's not me. I don't, like, how does this relate to me? Well, let me tell you, since you asked. There, there's this thing that Jesus asks us to do, and he asks us to actually act likewise. He, and, and we see it all throughout his teaching uh, to, his, to his followers, to his disciples. He tells them to seek first the kingdom, right? Seek first the kingdom. He tells them to deny themselves, to take up their cross and to follow him. That means put away everything that you wanted to do with your life and follow the mission of being about my mission, right? So he he talked about wanting them to have him above all else, desire God above all else, right? Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the first commandment. And so it wasn't, it, it wasn't like Jesus was just modeling this to because he needed it. He was modeling it because we need to do the same. We need to find that same, I need that, that same kind of drive, that fervent drive to be about our Father's business. So this does apply to us. And I don't know about you, but I long for that sort of discipline and fervor in my life. I, I really, really want someday to look back on my life and say, when, when, they, when they look at me, when people look at me, or when they look at my life, they say, he was passionate about being about the mission of Jesus. He, he, was, he, he moved, for, above all else, he moved towards that and loved people and loved his family and loved all of those things in, in tandem with that. He pursued God with all his heart. That's what I want to be said about me. I wonder about you, you know, that, that we have to go from our business to God's business, yeah? From our business to God's business. And I think about this, God's business versus my business. God's business versus my business. Maybe even God's business versus my busyness, right? I, I think we live in a culture, at least up until March of 2020, we lived in a culture of busyness, right? Where we were marked by, and you might even say, I, I, and I think this is true, that we still live in a culture of busyness. Regardless of, of the fact that we've been shut down and, and can't be as busy as maybe we want to be, uh, we still find ways... We invent ways to keep ourselves busy. And, and I think that this culture of busyness keeps us distracted from God's business, right? Or even the business we should be, we should be looking at. That's why I'm talking about this idea of minding your business. Um, one blessing of the coronavirus shutdown is that it's given us a chance, if we will, to take a deep breath, stop, and examine what's around us. Examine what we've been involved in. Examine our business, right? Where we can actually think about our business. Have you all heard the saying, mind the gap? So the mind the gap actually started in the UK and it was developed in order to uh, create awareness for people who were stepping from the platform onto the train, right, in the UK. It says, mind the gap right there because it creates that awareness that if you don't look, if you're not paying attention, that you could trip over the gap and fall flat on your face, right? Or God forbid, through the trap, or what, whatever, right? Like, it, you need to mind the gap. And when I say mind your business, that's what I mean. I don't, I mean mind your, think about, we need to think about what we're involved in. We need to, we need to really pay attention to what we're involving ourselves 
in, to the business that we're doing, to, to the things that we're thinking about. We have to mind our business. So what are our priorities, right? What are, wh- whose business am I about? Am I about my business or am I about God's business? We have to really ask ourselves that question. So speaking of paying attention, um, I'm, I'm going back to the parents for a second. Not parents in the room. I mean, I should probably say, if you forget your 13-year-old, we need to talk about that, right? Like, we, we, need, we need to talk about that. And so they, they forgot Jesus in Jerusalem. Why? Well, it says because they assumed that he was with them. They, they forgot Jesus in Jerusalem because they assumed that he was with them. That he was following them and their plan. Uh, they weren't paying attention to what Jesus was up to, right? Perhaps in the busyness of rounding everybody up, I assume they were part of a large caravan. Uh, that that in, in maybe in the process of counting them up, they counted John the Baptist twice. I don't know, right? Uh, John and Jesus, maybe they looked very similar. They were cousins. Who knows, right? So, so oh, I, can, I saw Jesus. I saw John. Okay, we're good. I don't know, but the busyness somehow distracted them. I was, uh, this was a, a, quite a while ago, but Eli was two years old, and uh, my dad and I were watching a football game. Now, when uh, I watch a football game, I get I get transfixed. I don't know about anybody else. Uh, my, my wife makes fun of me all the time because I ca- like if I'm watching a football game, I, I am I am distracted by it. Okay, uh, and and so so Sarah says to my dad and I, just watch Eli for a second. I have to I have to go do something. It was it was going to take her all but two minutes, right? Well, in this two minutes, and I'm not really sure how it happened because I was watching the football game. Eli opened the front door. He's two. I didn't think he could do this. He opened the front door, went out the front door, and over to a playground that was adjacent. For We lived in an apartment complex. And went to a playground right there and began playing with, or just playing there with no one, thank God, right? And uh, before you report me to CPS, I, my, my wife came out and said, uh, where's Eli? I said, what do you mean he's right? Uh, okay, yeah, and then, I, and then I realized the door was open, and thank God he was only right over here at the playground, but I, I thought about what, what was the reason for that, and it was what? I was distracted, yeah? I was, I was completely distracted by something, and I let Eli do what he shouldn't have been doing. I, I missed a vital piece of parenting there. Uh, but, but what I did was I missed a vital piece of relationship because I was, I was focused on something else. Busyness breeds distraction. Busyness breeds distraction. And, and when you're busy, when you keep yourself busy, right, when, you, when you're not minding your busyness, when you keep yourself distracted you're, you're dis- you're, or busy, you're distracting yourself from things like the relationships in your life. Because maybe it's easier to just, just be distracted than to deal with the relationships in your life. Or to deal with your own stuff. I might not hear a lot of amens on that. But right to, to, if I can distract myself, I don't have to deal with my own stuff. And I think that's probably where we're at right now in, in kind of the corona shutdown, right? Because we, we've, had, we've had ample time to examine ourselves, to take a good look in the mirror and to see who we really are and what business we're really about, right? If we're really about God's business or if we're really about our business. And for some of us, uh, that, that has been a reality. We've looked at that. We've taken a hard look. We've examined. We've made some changes. For others, we've just distracted ourselves. We've just found the distractions in, in place where we don't have to deal with maybe the bad business we're involved in. And, and again, I don't mean that it's necessarily sin. I don't mean that it's necessarily your actual business or your work. 
What I'm talking about is the stuff that distracts you from what God has for you. The best that God has for you. The things that God has for you. And it's those distractions. I I think about the distractions from pressing into Jesus. I, I mean, I've had more time in the last seven months to press in to Jesus. And yet I don't know that I've fully utilized those seven months the way that I know I could have. I'm just talking real, right? Because it's easier to scroll Facebook, see what the news looks like. It's easier to just do something else than to press in when I know I can. And, and we've got to think about the distractions in our lives because our busyness keeps us from his business, right? Our busyness can keep us from his business. And they went about their business assuming that Jesus was coming along for the ride. I'm not sure you heard it. So I'm going to help you. They were going about their business believing that Jesus was fully on board with their business. Maybe maybe that's you. Maybe that's me at times where I'll just be going about my business thinking, well, certainly God's about my business, right? C- certainly, God, certainly God is going to uh, be along for the ride here um, because it's not really about his business, it's about my business, and I want my business to become his business rather than my business to become his business. I know that sounds a little confusing, but I think you'll get it if I explain it to you like this. Maybe you've, you're at a place right now where you feel like you've been about your business, and you're frustrated. And you feel like, man, I, how could you treat me like this, God? That's what his parents said to him when they found him. God, how could you treat me this way? Je- Jesus, don't you, don't you know we've been searching for you? And, uh, and Jesus answers, you knew where to find me. And I think if we're being honest with ourselves, that's us too, is we're distracted by our busyness. We're distracted by our own business. And we say to, we say to Jesus, where are you? What, I mean, why, why would you do this to me? Why would you, why would you leave me here? Why would, you, why would you take me to this place? But the reality is you took you to this place. It's okay for us to be honest sometimes and realize that we made a mistake and we went a direction that maybe we shouldn't have gone. And Jesus says, hey, 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 you know where to find me. You, you know where to find me. And, and you know where to find Jesus today. And, and here's the thing. He would say the same thing to you that he said to his parents. And I don't think he quite said it this way, but I said it this way. He said, you know where to find me. You just need to mind your own business. Just think about your own bit. What business are you involved in? <clears throat> are you walking your own business out or are you wanting Jesus' business? Your father's business. We have to mind our own busyness. We have to mind the gap, yeah? I don't want to trip over my own business trying to, trying to figure out how to get to Jesus. I want to mind my business so I can get, get to his. It's helpful? <clears throat> okay, we've, we've had the opportunity to slow down. Some of us have taken it. Some of us haven't. That's okay. That, that, that's inconsequential. But rather now than keeping ourselves busy and distracting ourselves, what if we decided, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to examine. I'm going to think about my business. I'm going to think about what I've been involved in, how I've been thinking. You know, what, what has this whole thing meant for me? What does God want for me? Uh, what is my identity in this, right? I, I think many of us have lost our identity in all that's been happening <clears throat> because we haven't sought to find our identity in Christ. 
we've sought to find our identity in so many other things. And that's easy to do. But we're, we're in a time of distraction right now. And we have to focus in on what Jesus wants for us and to be about his business. Do you long, I mean, do you long to stop tripping over your stuff? <laughs> I really, I really do. I, and, and I, I know I'm not the only one. I, I know I just, I don't want, so many times I find myself just going about my, my business. And, and I, I hear Jesus saying, you know where to find me. You know where to find me. There's this one phrase that Jesus says within this time frame that I think is so important for us to grab hold of. And I think if we can grab hold of it, we too can, can find a, this passion that Jesus had to be about our Father's business. I think if we can really grab hold of this, he says, I must be about my Father's business, right? He said, I must. He didn't say, it's a really good idea for me to be. He didn't say, uh, maybe I should be about my father's business. Or, I'm just thinking that's probably the right thing to do. He said, I must be about my father's business. It's adamant, right? There, there is, it, there, there's, no, there, there's absolutely no question about it. This is what I must do. And that's what Jesus was trying to get at. And so I want to ask, what must you do? Right? In, in your heart, in your soul, what must you do? And that list really matters. I want to run through a list of things that Jesus said he must do. I'm just going to throw the scriptures up on, on there. Uh, you can write them down if you want. I'm not going to read the scriptures. I'm going to summarize what he says within these scriptures. But, um, but look at this list of things that Jesus said. I must do. This was throughout his life. Throughout his life. And this is not the extended list. This is just the things that I, I grabbed that seemed most important to me. So first he starts with, I must be about my father's business, right? Then he says, I must preach the good news of the kingdom. I must suffer many terrible things. I must be a guest in the house of sinners and tax collectors. I must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified so that I can raise again on the third day. I must bring all the sheep into the fold and I must raise from the dead. I must do these things. And all of it, all of it comes down to, I must be about my father's business. Yeah? It, it, it's the whole thing. He's saying, all of this is my father's business and I must be about it. It starts today. That's what he said. It starts right now and I must through the rest of my life be about my father's business. I want my life to echo this mustness. Do you? I, I want my life to echo this, that I must be about my father's business. There's so much business we can be about right now. And, and many of us in this room, we've taken a stand on things. We've, we've said, I must talk about this. I must be about this. We have to evaluate those things that we must be about. There are things that are good to be involved in. There are things that are helpful for us to do. There, there are things that pull on our heart that are part of our passions that, yeah, certainly we need to be a part of. We, we need to start those things. But the things we must do, we have to evaluate those things. And what must I do? I must be about my father's business, right? I must. This tenacity, this single-mindedness to build God's kingdom and to be wrapped up in what Jesus has for me. I long for that. That's what I must be involved in. That's what I must be wrapped up in. And I want to echo Jesus here. Uh, that when I'm found by Him, I'm found being about my Father's business, right? I want to be found doing that. I want to be found in those places. And, and I want to say this. If 
you look through that, if you really go and read those, those scriptures I laid out, or, or just read through the New Testament and, and look at all the times Jesus said must, I must do. And what you'll see is that his must list is all for our benefit. His, his list of musts is all for you and me. It's, for, it's on our behalf. That when he says, I need to bring all the sheep into the fold, that's you, 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 right? And you. It's every one of us. When he says, I must, I must be arrested. I must go and be crucified and I must raise to life on the third day. Guess who that's for? It's for me and you. I must do these things. His father's business was to redeem mankind. When he says, I must be about my father's business, what he's saying is, I must be about the business of redeeming mankind, humanity. And guess what? That's still his business. His business didn't change. It it didn't change one bit. What changed is now who goes and delivers the message, and that's you and me. And so for those of us who Christ did those that must list for, that group of people, you and I, we're the recipients of that, and now we get to go and have a must list of things that we get to do for the sake of the world, yeah? For the sake of those who don't know Jesus yet. For the sake of those who need the gospel in their lives, who are hurting, who are frustrated, who are isolated, who need Jesus more than ever, yeah? And that's up to you and me to be representatives. That's what we've been talking about for several weeks. We get to be the representatives of Jesus. We get to go and we get to, we, no, no, we don't get to, we must. See, we don't just get to, we do get to. And man, let that be my attitude, right, that I get to. But I want it to be deeper than that. Not a must that's obligation driven, but a must that rises up like from the depths of my soul, yeah? From my bones where I must, I must tell people about Jesus. I must show people who He is. I must lay down my life for their sake, for the sake of the world, yeah? I must do these things. And so if Jesus was about his father's business, then he would say to us, just as I was sent by the father, I'm now sending you. And so just as I must be about my father's business, now you must be about your father's business. So let's be about it. Yeah? Let's be about it. So what? Uh, if, you'd, if you'd stand... I want to pray for you today if, uh, again, all, as always, if, you, if you've never said yes to Jesus, He's always engaging hearts, always engaging lives. There's never a moment where He doesn't want to bring someone to life. That's His business. And so if you're on the other side of the camera, if you're here in this room, and you would say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to I want to devote, I I want this must list to rise up within me, but I know it only comes from the Spirit of God that can only rest within me if I put my faith and hope in Jesus. And so if that's you today, on the other side of the camera again, if that's you, even in your office, in your bedroom, wherever you're at, or here in this room, and you just want to confess that faith, that you say, I I believe it. I believe it with my heart that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead so that I could have eternal life. If you believe that in your heart, I just want you to say these simple words, Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I give you my life. And don't be alone in this. We want you to connect. If that's you, 
and, and you're online and you've only joined us online, we want to connect with you somehow online via email, a phone call, whatever. Just if you would, just connect with us. Let us know that you made this decision to say yes to Jesus. If you're in this room, let us know that you said yes to Jesus so that we can walk with you in this. And God, I pray for those who made that decision today to to put their faith in you, put their hope in you. I pray that you would speak loudly to them in their conscience, in their heart, throughout nature, in all the ways that you can speak. That you'd reveal yourself to hearts and minds. In Jesus' name. And for us, let us be about your business. Not our own. Not our own business, not our own busyness. But your business. We must be about your business. Let's sing. We hope you enjoyed today's message. Here's a link to some of our other messages. And if you were blessed by today's video, would you go to RhapsodyChurch.com? It's in our description. And consider partnering with us. Have a great day.